Someone for Everyone was an attempt at writing a happy song, an upbeat song. Um, I was told uh, that maybe I didn't have many happy songs and I could do with some. So I, I tried it. And uh, the idea of there being someone for everyone is quite a beautiful, romantic thought. So uh, that's my attempt. I don't know if I succeeded or not, but that's what it is. It's cold in Ohio. I'm not going there. Cold in Ohio was both kind of inspired by and written with a singer called Kim Ritchie. Uh, Kim Ritchie is this uh, really brilliant alt country singer uh, who now lives in Nashville. And um, she was over here playing and I'm a big fan so I, was, I went to see her play. And, uh, we were walking back with some other friends to the tube station after the, um, after the show and someone asked her, uh, is it cold in Ohio? Kim is originally from Ohio and again the phrase kind of just stuck and just between that being said and the tube the whole chorus was in my head it's cold in Ohio so I'm not going there which I quite like I like the idea that you wouldn't go somewhere because it's, it's cold so I, I looked up other cold places uh, and Vostok station which is the second line in that chorus is the coldest inhabited place on the planet uh, I think only scientists live there so uh, and then we kind of threw in New York because everyone knows New York and has some association with it. Um, but she, uh, she really managed to kind of pull the rest of the song out of that. So it was a real honor for me to be able to work with her. And um, it turns out that uh, it's Ed's favorite song as well. So that's kind of cool. I've been walking the street in the fine. The only conclusion, uh, I have a slight confession in that it came about after watching an episode of The Big Bang Theory. Um, and there's an episode where Sheldon talks to, or is talking with Amy Farrah Fowler and how he is um, confused about his feelings. And he says something like, I've gone through all the options and the only conclusion is love. And I thought that was very beautiful. So I wrote a song about it. Um, and that's where that comes from. <laughs> This heart has been broke This heart has been fixed this So, uh, the song's still yours uh, The whole first verse of the song came about while I was in bed, about to sleep and it just kind of uh, pecked away at me to, to write it down and I don't know where it came from, I have no idea but uh, I like that the opening line was just this heart has been broken, this heart has been fixed. This heart, it is opened via Machiavellian tricks. And I thought that was really clever. <laughs> so I was really impressed with myself. Uh, although I have no idea where it came from, so I can't really take any credit. And I was quite, quite proud of it as the song comes out. Uh, the producer, Will Hicks, uh, really played around with the chorus and how the things sound. And I, he, he kind of fought with me and won because I wanted to do something else and he said I think we should do this and I let him I went his way and he was right so um, it shows what a a good producer does and what a good producer he is but I'm, I'm really chuffed with the song how it's come out so I'm very glad there inside a moment of time all is beauty is a song about a moment it's a song about the realization of being in love and the very point of it and all the little things that go on around that moment um, it's a it's a, it's kind of an attempt of how the world might stand still for you in that in that point and uh, that's that's kind of what that song is about and how maybe life has changed for the better in a second I know I make mistakes and I can let you down uh, Don't Let Me Let You Go is probably the cheesiest title I've ever written for a song. Uh, and I had it for about a year and a half before I tried to do something with it because I thought it would just be a cheesy country song. And it probably should be. But um, I got set up to work with a singer called Amy Wadge who wrote Thinking Out Loud with Ed Sheeran. And um, I kind of thought, I gave her a whole list of titles and that's how I sometimes work is just write titles down and she picked that one out. So 
Uh, we wrote that together, um, and I think she did a really good job of, even though it's quite a cheesy title, it does not come across that way at all. And uh, it seems like a genuine um, attempt at trying to communicate to someone, which I think uh, maybe, especially for, for men, can be quite difficult sometimes, and they don't know how to uh, uh, describe how they feel or communicate how they feel and I think this is maybe a way of saying you know I'm, I'm probably gonna get things wrong but I don't want to get this wrong uh, and that, I thought that was a nice thing don't want to get ahead of myself but isn't this crime don't want to the song ahead of myself came to me whilst walking to the toilet that's a fact uh, I don't know why again these things just come out of the blue and I sang it straight away. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but isn't this grand? And I thought, that's cool. I like that. And it reminded me of a, there's a songwriter called Ron Sexsmith, who I think is a genius. Uh, and it reminded me of something he might write. And then I'd been listening to Van Morrison's Moondance album a lot. So I kind of tried to, uh, what's the word, cross-pollinate? That's not the word, but something, you know, kind of mix the two and see what I got. And, I just got this, you know, upbeat kind of um, hopeful song about jumping into love and trying not to, and jumping into love and trying not to, and then, you know, kind of realizing that's what you do, and then doing it anyway, which I thought was, that's a nice idea. I like the idea that even though you, you may know it's not going to work, you still got to try. In Our Own Worlds is a song about um, history in the sense of when you meet someone for the first time, generally you come with um, all the things you have been through before and so does that person. And it kind of, and you may have gone through a whole load of bad stuff and the other person may have gone through a whole load of bad stuff or good stuff as well, I guess, but it's, a, it's, it's kind of saying um, we're all a bit broken, but we are perfect. And it's, that's the idea behind it. It's a, kind of, it's a, song, of, a song about people fitting together regardless of what they've been through, I think. I think. I might be wrong. <laughs> but that's what I think. Sometimes it's hard to speak what's on Sometimes it's hard is probably the heaviest song on the record. It's a song about dealing with depression and sadness. And um, if you have been through moments, uh, kind of low moments in your life, or if you're going through them, it feels like they're going to last forever. It's, it, it's really hard to see the way out uh, past it, if that makes sense. So it's a song about saying it will pass. It's OK. You're going to get through this. And you know, you are good and life is okay, so uh, it's probably the song I am most proud of on the record for that reason. The last song on the album is Let Love Hold You Now and from quite early on in making the record I kind of knew that was going to be the last track because it was a really, uh, you know, kind of embracing title of trying to um, move on from anything you've been through and be brave enough to be uh, reciprocal to love. Uh, and I thought that was really nice and it seems to, the song seems to star this couple who are uh, on the run but you're never really sure what from and I, I think it's just history itself of the things they've been through. And um, it's the idea of comfort and uh, being there for each other I think. And, um, you know, sometimes you do have to be a little bit brave to fall in love. Because um, a lot of people, you worry that you're going to get hurt again or whatever, but uh, you have to you have to be out there if you want it. So, uh, that seemed like a nice uh, idea to end the record on. 